Most people talk about models, but very few people talk about the kind of mess you hand the model. This video is all about the differences in prompting between ChatGPT 5.1, which came out a week or so ago, and Gemini 3, which came out a couple of days ago. I'm going to get into the specifics. I'm going to explain how you prompt them differently and why it matters and how your attention changes as a result. So we're going to get very specific and tactical because I think that is going to be a huge driver for you to be productive with, frankly, both of these models. Because the goal here is not to have you pick a model. It is to have you use the right tool for the right job. So if I were to give you a summary of each of these after playing with them for the last few days, Gemini 3 is built to eat messy, high entropy context, logs, PDF, screenshots, video, and turn it into some kind of structure. ChatGPT 5.1 is built to take clean, relatively low entropy inputs, relatively organized inputs, and do complex, multi-step tasks with them. Reasoning, coding, planning, narrative development. So this implies real shifts in your prompting habits, and you're better off asking, which model do I do with which job? Which model do I pick with which job? Than just assuming that you can go with one or the other. So let's start and ground set on how to think about ChatGPT 5.1, and then we'll get into Gemini 3 and the comparison. So your baseline mental model for ChatGPT 5.1 is that you should treat 5.1 as your operator slash business writer slash coder. It loves clear roles. It loves audiences. It loves specifics on tone. Remember, they tuned this model to follow instructions, and they partly did that specifically to address complaints around ChatGPT 4 on writing. ChatGPT 5.1 performs best with curated, relevant context, not just giant raw dumps. And from a mode perspective, you get benefits both with speed and with depth, and you have to use them intelligently and intentionally. And so if you are doing a speed run with ChatGPT 5.1, you want to be thinking of it as what instruction set do I give the model that I don't want it to chew and spend time thinking about it. I just want it to follow exactly what I say and do it versus an instruction set to give the model where you want those reasoning tokens. Everything else about ChatGPT 5.1 sits on top of that understanding of the model. And so if we transition into prompting for 5.1 and think about you sort of in classical engineering terms, keep, stop, start, right? Like what do we keep from a prompting perspective that we may have used already? What do we stop doing? What do we start doing? You want to keep defining role, audience, and tone. We've heard that advice for a long time. This is still a high leverage pattern in 5.1. You want to continue to be explicit about structure of output. Ask about sections, headings, bullet count, JSON schemas. 5.1 is built to follow those structural instructions very reliably. You also want to keep using modes intentionally. If it's light edits, if it's quick answers, you're going to go to instant. If it's hard reasoning, if it's refactors, you're going to use thinking. Essentially, you want to keep letting one drive the narrative and use the context you give it to solve difficult tasks. This model likes to eat problems. So executive memos, product narratives, internal explainer docs, these are things that like it's going to do really well at. Now you want to stop dumping huge unfiltered context windows into 5.1. I don't find that that is super relevant. I think you pay more and you tend to dilute the value of the model. You want to stop hiding the task inside a wall of background. I see that in a lot of so-called big prompts. You don't necessarily need that page of company lore from the wiki page, right? Just ask specifically for what you want. And this aligns with ChatGPT 5.1's docs as well. You also want to stop packing four or five jobs into one prompt. You want to give the model the specific ask you're looking for, and then you can chain it into additional steps if you need to. And so idea generation is a different sort of model task versus critique versus selection. Those to me feel like they should naturally be broken with 5.1 because of the way the model prefers clean inputs. I would also call out that now that we have a model that is willing to follow instructions on writing style, use it. Start to ask for different kinds of instructions. How do you ask for instruction on tone that matches marketing versus instruction that matches boardroom versus instruction that matches engineering team? 5.1 is still not quite as good as Claude at style, but it is much better at following instructions than it was. So what do you start doing? We've done keep and stop for 5.1. You should start treating 5.1 
almost like an internal function library. This is sort of a little bit of engineering talk, but you want to be able to define reusable patterns and call back to them with stable formats as much as you can. So, hey, this is my stable pattern for drafting an internal memo to the team. I'm defining it explicitly. I'm asking ChatGPT 5.1 to remember it, or maybe if I use it a ton, I'm putting it into project instructions or system instructions. And then I'm going to go back and I'm going to invoke it deliber deliberately by saying draft an internal memo. You want to reuse those table formats. You want to start giving step plans when you want deliberate thinking. So first ask three clarifying questions, then propose three options, then choose one, then write the doc, right? That backfills the model into thinking carefully about the task. You also want to start to be explicit about tools. I talked about this when 5.1 launched. It just continues to be important. Tell the model what tools are important. Give it those constraints. Is web search important? Say so. You also want to start constraining verbosity and register. If you say this has got to be within five to seven bullets and it's for a VP audience, that is super helpful to the model because it constrains the register of language and helps the model know what to actually put out. That is 5.1. When you go to Gemini, it is a different world because Gemini is built for different kinds of tasks. So if we run the same keep, stop, start with Gemini 3, you get some overlap. I'm not going to pretend like these are entirely different beasts because they are all large language models, but you get some important differences that I want to call out here. So with Gemini, you want to continue to be precise. You want to continue to be unambiguous. So Gemini 3 responds best to clear goals and output formats. That's somewhat similar to 5.1. Having some structure on the output is also still helpful. So JSON tables, standardized tags, whatever you use for structured output. I am not going to be the guy that tells you JSON is magic because it's not. Just have clear structure. You also want to keep using stepwise reasoning when tasks are complicated. And so if you're saying step one, step two, and step three, like I talked about with 5.1, that's still useful. What you need to stop doing, number one, this is so important, please stop treating Gemini 3 like it is chat GPT from Google. It has different characteristics. Its real edge, as I've called out, is being multimodal, ingesting video, ingesting images, ingesting text, ingesting very lengthy context as first-class objects. If you only ever send it very short text prompts, you're not really using it for what it's differentiated against. The other thing you need to stop doing is putting all your detailed instructions at the top when you use huge context. If you are using that million token context window, and Google's docs say this very specifically, you want to put the context first and the instructions at the end. So with long docs, with code bases, with videos, the better pattern is to put all of that at the top and then put the instructions at the bottom and say, anchored to the information above, based on the information above, X, Y, Z, this is your instructions. Stop assuming Gemini 3 will be verbose or chatty by default. This is very different from ChatGPT 5.1, right? Gemini 3 is tuned to be concise. If you want a longer or more narrative answer, you are going to need to say so. I have wrestled with this already with the model. It loves, covers everything, but it loves to be concise. Stop referring to your multimodal inputs vaguely. Seeing screenshot above is weak. Instead say, use image one, funnel dashboard, for XYZ. Use image two, checkout screen, for ABC. Compare them by doing one, two, three. You want to be as specific as you can because you have to assume that the model needs that context to know what piece of this lengthy context you're giving it. If it's sorting through multiple videos and maybe sorting through screenshots and sorting through images, help it find what you're talking about in the instructions. Gemini 3, what can you start doing? We've done keep and stop for Gemini 3. The last section is start. Start using Gemini 3 as your entropy eater. Give it those giant messy bundles, right? The logs, the PDFs, the transcripts, etc. Ask it to output structured grounded artifacts for you. Issues lists, timelines, hypotheses, tables. You also want to start anchoring your long context prompts really explicitly. So one example of a pattern would be having role and global constraints, having big context blocks in the middle of the prompt for most of the prompt. And then at the very end, based on the information above, do X in Y schema. This helps you to anchor those long context prompts 
so the model knows what to do once it's read the context. You also want to start specifying the verbosity and the persona every time you prompt with Gemini 3. Use a conversational tone. I need 800 to 1,000 words here. Return a terse bullet list. Whatever it is, don't assume that the concise response from Gemini 3 is just going to be fine. Decide what you want. You should also start naming and indexing every single modality. And that sounds complicated, but it doesn't have to be, right? Image one, that's naming a modality, right? That's naming one of the things you put in. Video two, from a minute 30 to two minutes. CSV, columns one through four. Tell it what you want it to use when you're giving the task because you have to assume it needs to search the pile. And so you get better retrieval if you're more precise. Also, start using those reasoning controls on purpose. When available, you want to raise the thinking level only when you truly need cross-document synthesis. You can keep it low if you're just doing labeling, if you're just doing re pure retrieval and extraction. Tune that on purpose. Just like ChatGPT 5.1, you want to be deliberate about when you use thinking. So if we step back, I've done a deep comparison here of 5.1 versus Gemini 3. What do we see overall? The deep difference is not just Google versus OpenAI. It is what kind of entropy each model is best at handling. You are looking at a world of context entropy versus task entropy. So context entropy is how messy, large, and multimodal your inputs can be. They could have lots of irrelevant details. They can have mixed formats. They can have timelines, screenshots, logs, videos. Sound like Gemini 3? It is. Task entropy is how open-ended and multi-step the job is, right? Vague objectives, competing constraints, multiple stakeholders, tool calls, planning and writing and coding. Chat GPT 5.1 is a little bit better there, but I want to get into the nuance, right? So you get the best results when you align the model to the entropy it's dealing with. Gemini 3 does well with high context entropy. I think it does okay with task entropy, but I would grade it about moderate. Here's everything, find the signal and structure it is a great use for Gemini 3. Chad GPT 5 or 5.1, is very low to moderate on context entropy. You have to give it really clean signal, but then you can give it a complex task. And I wanna be precise about this because ChatGPT 5.1's docs do call out that if your context window is uh, competing, if you are giving it instructions that are ambiguous and try and cancel each other out, like be descriptive and concise, ChatGPT 5.1 doesn't like that. It will burn tokens trying to fix that ambiguity. I have seen it push back on me when it feels my prompts are inaccurate, which I love. Assuming you have clear prompts though, I do think it can handle a very high complexity task and think it through. It is sort of like a brain in a jar in that regard. If you can give it a really clean input, it can process it, and it can be quite a complex task, and it will come back really thoughtfully. I want to emphasize here, the differences I'm talking about are differences on top of very capable baseline LLM capacity. These models are all good at lots and lots of everyday tasks. They're good at writing emails. They're good at synthesizing PRDs. They're good at writing engineering requirements. The things I'm calling out are the nuances that help you make the most of these models. So prompting shifts in line with this insight around entropy, right? So Gemini 3 prompts, you actually are spending your effort on output structure, you're spending your effort on task constraints, on how you anchor phrases and name and define which part of the context you're retrieving. So you need to get comfortable feeding high entropy multimodal context, which I normally shy away from, but you have to define what good synthesis looks like and good analysis looks like across that context. So schemas, ranking criteria, what you retrieve, et cetera. Whereas with GPT 5.1, you're spending more of your time defining the task definition. Is that really clean? Is it un unambiguous? You're making sure you insist on the tone you want, and you may pre-process it so that well-structured context is available to the model so that it can think deeply and not wade through junk. If you want all of this in one line, use Gemini 3 to tame the chaos of your inputs and use ChatGPT 5.1 when you're tackling hard thinking and communication around more structured inputs, once that chaos is structured. You can do some of both with both models, but that is the takeaway I am starting to come to. I think both are very strong. I think Gemini 3, we are still at the beginning of exploring those capabilities. 
I know that it has capabilities on the coding side that I didn't discuss a lot in this video, probably do a separate one on how it codes. I think a lot of the power that you see in some of these general purpose exams and tests that it's run around visualization and around understanding how code is structured and around building things usefully in one go, it comes down to the ability to deeply understand multimodal inputs and write clear, coherent responses to those inputs. And that's why I focused a lot of this prompting guide for Gemini 3 there. There will be other insights we come to in the future, but I wanted this initial guide to focus on where I see stable differences between the models so that we can build our understanding from there. I hope this has been useful. Again, both models are great. It's about understanding the nuances, and that's why I'm giving you this sort of prompting 201 masterclass on GPT 5.1 versus Gemini 3. Good luck.